Welcome to Ace Linguistics. This channel is about all things linguistic, discussing topics in phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and sociolinguistics. So let's see what we've got today. Fun question. Is one morpheme one syllable? No, the answer is there is no one to one correspondence between morphemes and syllables. So to answer, to answer this question, I need to give you specific examples. I bet you're happy now. So here, bet is one morpheme, one syllable. Yes, here it is. But what about, I know all the words of the English language. Or I'd better say, I do not know, right? Words is one syllable, but it has two morphemes. So word is one syllable, but sa is zero syllables. It merges with this and it still stays part of the one syllable. So it doesn't form a new syllable. And if you look at some words like carpet, it's just, it's two syllables, carpet. But what about, I have two pets, one for home and another for my car. I like my car pet better than my home pet. This carpet has nothing to do with carpet, right? So carpet, car, and pet is not the same as car and pet. The word carpet is one morpheme but two syllables. A morpheme can be one syllable, it can be two syllables, it can be three syllables or more. For example, cardigan is an item of clothing. As far as contemporary English is concerned, cardigan is one morpheme. And this is as far as contemporary English is concerned, carpet is one morpheme. So if you go to history and say, oh, carpet comes from Latin and in Latin et means this, that has no relevance to contemporary English in terms of the way people perceive the word carpet. A native speaker of English perceives the word carpet as one morpheme. And so does he or she perceive the word cardigan as one morpheme. But carpet has two syllables, cardigan has three syllables. And there's still one morpheme. And the word word or the word bet, they have one syllable, there's still one morpheme. And the word, the plural s, as in the word words, is not a separate syllable and it's still a morpheme. Does every morpheme consist of at least one sound though? For example, books. Well, book, one syllable, one morpheme. Se, one morpheme, not one syllable, but at least it has a sound, right? But is there a morpheme that is not pronounced? Well, that's a good question. That uh, depends on your approach. So, they work every day of the week. He works every day of the week. Okay. So, if I ask you, what is S here? This S is, of course, different from this S. This is a plural S. This is third person singular S. So, this is one morpheme and it has one sound. But... So what does it show? It shows third person singular. Work, he work, he works. What about third person plural? What is the third person plural ending? In some linguistic theories, they say the third person plural ending is zero, is nothing. So in some theoretical discussions, they conceptualize nothingness as a morpheme, but it doesn't make sense to think of it now. Fun games. Bring some example and you can list 
you can say number of syllables number of morphemes okay care number of syllables one number of morphemes one caring two morphemes two syllables carpet two syllables one morpheme carpets s um, again two syllables two morphemes because there's a plural right so how about settings how many morphemes how many syllables what about unhappy yes but if you say unhappily that would be unhappily three morphemes four syllables right now there is a this different discussion okay I, I mentioned the word unhappily in the word unhappily we know that the word happy is also a word right but there's also two other morphemes which is un and then the word the, from the morpheme ly so this is a prefix because it appears before the word this is a suffix it appears after the word so we know that you can say she's not really happy with her life so happy would be used in that context so but you never you can never say she's very un with her life or she's playing soccer lee you can say she's very playing soccer happily or unhappily these are not words on their own but happy is a word even outside unhappily so here we get an idea for a new classification of morphemes morphemes are classified in different ways one classification is classifying all morphemes into either free or bound. So a free morpheme is a morpheme that can stand alone and be used as an independent word in the language. However, a bound morpheme cannot stand alone or be used as an independent word in the language. I gave you examples already. I can give you more examples. For example, the word undesirable. How many morphemes does it consist of? Which ones are free, which ones are bound? More examples of free morphemes. Desire, shoe, screen. The word free itself. What about here? All suffixes and prefixes. Ness, ly, pre, like prejudge, prefix, arms, books, homes, third person, he walks, and she talks, desirable, huggable, undesirable, unhappy, unruly. So these are examples, ing in running, or er in teacher, or performer, or ist in pianist, or novelist or even linguist these are by virtue of being morphemes meaningful because by definition morphemes are meaningful units a morpheme is the smallest meaningful unit of language thanks for your time and attention and see you again soon